Hello, my name is Jim Gibbs. I'm a constable in Cannon County, Tennessee. On November 10th, 2011, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I was returning home from Woodbury, Tennessee. And as I approached the intersection of John Bragg Highway and Bradyville Road, two vehicles coming toward me turned right onto Bradyville Road in front of me. The second one was a red SUV, which I came over the years to identify as belonging to the volunteer fire department at Moortown. In fact, I thought, quite frankly, that the vehicle was owned by and driven by the chief fire chief, Michael George. <clears throat> As we went down Bradyville Road, nothing significant happened. We were all sort of grouped together, uh, the red SUV uh, in between myself and the lead vehicle. But then as we approached Burt Burgeon Road, the lead vehicle continued straight on to uh, Bradyville Road. The red SUV turned in, in front of me onto uh, Burt Burgeon. Just as you enter Burt Burgeon, maybe 100 feet uh, from the intersection, is a speed limit sign posted 45 miles an hour. As I approached that speed limit sign uh, after making the turn, I noticed that the red SUV accelerated rapidly ahead of me. He was uh, approximately uh, 100 feet, 200 feet in front of me when I made the turn onto Burt Burgeon. But then it sort of makes a curve and up over a hill and he just accelerated away at a, at, a, at a rapid pace. As I came up to about the speed limit and went up over the hill, it was clear to me as an experienced law enforcement officer through this uh, traffic enforcement that the vehicle was speeding uh, substantially. So I increased my speed to close the gap between the suspected speeding vehicle and because I thought that it was being driven by a, a fire chief who was also uh, a reserve deputy sheriff, I made the decision to take my cell phone uh, camera out and start videotaping the process. Um, I moved up into a position to try to get what is referred to commonly in law enforcement as a pace. In other words, I was going to match my speed with the suspect vehicle and then observe my speedometer so I could tell approximately how fast that vehicle was going. I got in the position to make that pace and get my clock at about the 750 uh, mailbox on uh, Bur Burgeon, which would indicate that I was about three quarters of a mile up the road. And that's about the time that I turned on my, on my camera. And from that point in time, I was about 500 feet behind the vehicle, and I was able to maintain that pace uh, for a f substantial distance going down Bur Burgeon, and clearly it established a, a speed limit or speed violation where the suspect vehicle was going 75 miles an hour. Here, let me show you what I saw. As we join the video, you can see the red SUV about 500 feet from my vehicle. This is interesting because Jesse Laxon, in his letter to the editor, claimed that a mysterious gold car was on his bumper. The gold car was his reason for speeding. Clearly, Jesse Laxon was lying. Frankly, at this point, I don't think he even realizes I'm behind him estimating his speed. I clocked the speeding vehicle at 75 miles an hour from the beginning of my pace until the area aligned with homes just after the intersection of Burt Road, about a half mile. As we approach a hill in blind driveway that was the scene of a school bus accident caused by a speeding driver, the pace remains the same. At this point, I'm de trying to determine a safe area to accelerate close enough to make my traffic stop. But as we round the curve at Conley Lane, which is the scene of a fatality hit and run accident caused by speeding, the pace appears to pick up as we meet oncoming traffic on the narrow road. Our pace increases to over 80 miles an hour, increases the speed 
as the vehicle begins to pull away from my vehicle, which is now over 80 miles an hour. Jesse Laxon passed the vehicle, which is clearly in a blind no passing zone. At this point, I determined the vehicle had to be stopped as the driver was a danger to the community. I engaged my blue lights and followed around the, the green pickup. As I followed Jesse Laxon, who was in the distance pulling away, my camera accidentally focuses on my speed on which is about 90 92 miles per hour. Jesse Laxon finally sees my blue lights and slows down but does not stop. Our speed as we travel through the narrow stretch of road lined with the rock embankment, which is where my wife and I frequently walk our dogs, we're still at 85 miles an hour. Jesse Laxon then turns to the left, across my path, and stops on a bridge leading to the Conley Park. George, I guess you know you're going way too fast. A little bit, yeah. All right. Just thought I might remind you that I've got law enforcement powers. Hey, it's a little different. Thank Take you, care. Sir. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm bad, bad road. That's all right. All right. Let me get out of your way. You can go. Well, there you have it. Now you've seen what I saw. It's uh, it's appalling to believe that a person who wants to call themselves a lifesaver being involved in, the, in a volunteer fire department that would put so many lives in danger uh, in, the, in the community that he actually represents. Uh, Burt Burgeon is frequently used for cyclists to train. In fact, our own county attorney rides bikes, bicycles up and down this narrow road. My wife and I, we have dogs and we walk every morning. We walk down that narrow road with, with dogs on leashes. It's really scary when cars are going by you, the speed limit, let alone going speeds up to 95 miles an hour. Another thing that uh, is really is seriously important, and um, that is the fact that uh, this uh, occurrence took place at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That's about the time that the school buses are delivering kids up and down Bur Virgin Road. And we have had one incident already where a school bus was actually collided with by a vehicle due to speed. Fortunately, no children were injured in that particular accident, but it was caused from excessive speed. And another incident, actually it was twofold. A speeding driver wrecked his car, ran off the road, and about in the area, if you recall, where uh, we had two oncoming cars come toward us. It's an area called Conley Lane. And a, and a young man crashed his vehicle there due to excessive speed. He got out of his vehicle and was walking along Burt Virgin Road looking for help. Uh, coming in the opposite direction, the same direction that myself and uh, this Mr. Laxon was going, uh, another car came along and ran over him and killed him at that intersection. So we've had a fatality accident there caused by speed also. Mr. Laxton wrote a letter to the editor uh, identifying himself. Uh, he didn't bother to tell me that night or that afternoon that he wasn't Michael George. He let me go on believing that I had, that I had identified uh, Michael George as the driver. But he identified himself and it, in a letter to the editor complaining, asking why I stopped him and uh, admitted in that letter that he was going 75 miles an hour. The speed limit is 45. What he didn't acknowledge in the letter was that he passed a car in a no passing zone and obviously he didn't admit that he was going up to 95 miles an hour. So he really uh, admitted uh, that he did violate the law and uh, it's just appalling that this person would seem outraged that I would stop him for doing such a re reckless and dangerous act in my community. 
Uh, the sheriff doesn't even seem to understand the fact that this act was so dangerous. He's not showing any support whatsoever toward this incident. In fact, he is uh, throwing false light on himself. But now you've seen it. You saw it as I saw it. And I hope truly going forward that uh, my neighbors, my district, and the people in my county would offer more support for constables out doing their job and not support fire chiefs, assistant fire chiefs, for violating the law in such a dangerous manner. And I hope that they would not support a sheriff who would not enforce uh, the, uh, the law such as you saw today. And I appreciate you looking. Thank you very much. You have a good evening.